Hey guys, we always get a lot of questions about background. So I thought let's make a quick video about the background and how you smoothen it in your studio. Because one of the main problems with Seamless is of course that they can very quickly become yeah, a lot of stuff on the back that you don't want in your pictures. So I'm not going to do a full retouch because of course you can also extend the plexiglass on the floor. And I'm just going to show you very quickly how you can do it. Now let's start by using the AI of Photoshop to extend our backdrop. So I'm just going to make a selection. And this is a little bit luck of course, but the AF functions of Photoshop are really great for this. So you just do nothing here and you just press generate. Now of course you can choose which one you like best. In this case I don't want a lot of the whites in this case, so that's okay for now. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And let's extend that too. Again, don't fill in anything, just press generate to fill and press generate. Now, if you get a message like an orange um, pop-up that says that you do, do something wrong, just type in a point, nothing more, just a point, and probably that message will not appear again. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think this is good enough. So let's do a layer flatten image for now. And let's make it a little bit nicer, of course. So let's just take this out. And you can just do that with content to wear fill. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now the problem is that, of course, we want to make that background nice and smooth, but not too smooth because you don't want to overdo something like this. Now, in Photoshop, you now have the option of AI, and of course, we can use that. So, first, duplicate your layer. Now, go for Select and Select Subject. Now, I intentionally choose this image because, well, to select a subject with just a portrait, that's easy. I also wanted to show you guys how far Photoshop has actually come with Select Subject. Now, look at this. Isn't this freaking amazing? Now, the thing that I do stress is always go for your European Union logo over here your mask and now just zoom in and make absolutely sure that Photoshop did not make any mistakes and as you can see here it's not perfect but hey so take your brush and always be aware that when you paint in a mask you are at a 100% so not on 60 so you paint in your mask and if you are worrying about hey what is it should it be white or black don't worry there are only two options so if white doesn't do what you want well you just press X and you go for black and there we go. It's easy, right, if you only have two choices. Okay, for now I'm going to do it really rough, as explained. I don't want to make the video too long, but you get the idea, right? Make sure that nothing of your model is selected. Now, it's no problem if there is a little bit of blue visible, like here. Don't even worry about that. That's no problem at all. But make sure that something like the head of your model, like here, is totally out of the selection. And as you can see here, I'm pretty rough with my selection. And again, it doesn't really matter as long as there's nothing of the model there. Uh, it doesn't really need it, so don't do that. Okay, on the guitar, I saw that it actually took out some of the tuning mechanisms. So just bring those back in. Now, if you want to make the selection really nice, that's only going to give you a better end result. If you do this for internet or a client that just want to make a print, it doesn't really matter, as you can see in a minute. Okay, just leave it like this for now. Oh, this is going to be a problem. So let's take this one out too. Okay, so everything else we're just going to leave because we're only going to focus on the backdrop in this uh, image. Okay, so I have my selection. There we go. And, and now the most important thing is that you cut out your model. So edit, cut. Now you might wonder, hey Frank, nothing's happened. Yes, it did. Because if I do this, you can see that the model is gone. Now the reason you have to make that selection really nice is because we're going to blur this backdrop. And if there is anything from the model in your selection, that will blur also and will give you a color difference. So we don't want that. But first we want to make sure that the model appears back in her position. So edit, paste special, paste into place. Okay, so now we have our model in that position. If I disengage this backdrop, you see that nothing happens. But if I disengage this one, you will see that we only have the model. So this is exactly what we need. Go to the center backdrop and now go for filter, go for blur and choose Gaussian blur. 
and it depends on what you want. If you want it super smooth, you go for this, but this looks absolutely horrendous. It doesn't make any sense at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to blur it just a little bit, just enough to take out those greases in the backdrop. And we want to make sure that it looks natural. There we go. I think this is okay. Now, if you have any problems with still showing some bending, and this is something that happens a lot with gray backdrops, there's a super simple trick to solve this. And this also works if you shoot on JPEG and you have a little bit too much uh, compression and you see those nasty bending in your shots. So let's see if we go to 100% if we have any here. And on YouTube, you probably see a lot of bending, but over here, the image is very, very nice and smooth. And one of the reasons is, of course, also I'm working on 16 bits files. But if you have that bending, there's a super simple trick. Just go for filter and go for noise, add noise, and only add 1% of Gaussian monogrammatic noise. We did Gaussian blur, so we need Gaussian noise and monogrammatic. If you do this, you won't see any difference at all in this image. But you will see a huge difference if you have those really nasty bending over here because it will literally take those out like magic. Okay, now we have the problem that it doesn't look right, right? It looks absolutely horrendous. And when I look at the original, well, that's a little bit better, but it's we want that smoothness in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity to zero. And I'm going to build it up to hero. To the point where I go like, okay, this backdrop looks pretty natural. And that's actually here. We still want a little bit of those creases in because it's a real backdrop. It's not a computer generated backdrop. Now, if you think like, hey, I want the floor a little bit less of that blur. And you just go for layer, layer mask, and you go for reveal all or hide all. depends on what you want. You take a brush, you take black paint, you make the brush as big as you want. And I would highly recommend a very soft brush, so hardness all the way to zero. And now what you do is with a very low opacity, like for example, 20%, you just take out your blur layer. And you just let it overflow a little bit to your backdrop. There we go. So we went from this to this. And now for the final step, you can still change the opacity. There we go. Okay, let's flatten your layer. And of course, normally, and this backdrop is of course way more bluer than that one. So this is something you should fix. But again, I wanted to do the video only about smoothing that backdrop. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was meant as a little tip in between. If you want to see more in-depth videos, make sure you check out the rest of our YouTube channel. And I hope this helps you out if you want to smooth your backdrops very, very fast. You can see here, it doesn't really matter that I didn't do my selection as nice. So that can save you a lot of time when you do a lot of retouching. As you can see here, you don't see any color differences. The thing that you have to be aware of, and this is very important, don't ever change the luminosity of your backdrop or the color while you are still smoothing it. Because then everything that the selection did wrong will stand out like a sore thumb. So you don't want to do that. Keep it as natural as possible. Okay, thank you so very much for watching, guys. Share the video, like, and subscribe so our channel can grow. See you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>